Thank you so much for coming to the live session of composition for key fundamentals of painting. Uh, as you may have seen me mention, I've already recorded this with a bunch of you today and now it's gone off Facebook, so I'm doing it again. Because I promised that I would, I promised that I would have it available for you in our group and also on YouTube. So I want to thank um, Gordon, Robin Hicks, uh, Nick, Brenda, uh, all the people that came earlier and, uh, and now I'm going to do it again. And if you're there now, please say hello. I can't see you're there unless you say hi. So please say hi. All right. Now, when I first started asking these questions about what is it you really need to learn more of or have in order to really get going with your painting. I got such terrific answers. And uh, there were things like um, being confident about your line and uh, understanding um, light and uh, questions about colour. And it occurred to me that you can already watch uh, what I do in composition you know I, I there's a color in your life episode of me creating a painting on youtube there's so many videos of me uh, creating paintings what i'm really interested in and what i thought would help you is to get you thinking about you and composition all right robin who was um with, with us she is a master of so many whether she's watercolor or oil or acrylic but does lots and lots of things. And today I want to really focus on helping you beam in on one thing uh, to make sure that you really focus your attention on that and experience everything you can through it. So you know that if you watched the video that I, I mentioned, I was at an exhibition and I think it was the Port Adelaide Rotary show. It's a very big art exhibition. And I saw a beautiful painting of a boat, an old wooden boat, uh, birds sitting on the prow, beautiful detail in the water. But there was something screaming at me in this painting. And it was the composition, the bow line on the boat. It, it would have just fallen in. <laughs> this boat was not gonna float. And I was, Look, I find that absolutely crushing to look at because I'm like, oh my God, you've spent all this time, weeks, however long, on making all that detail and you didn't uh, get the composition right first. So you could have all the skill and put all the beauty into a work, but if the composition isn't there, it just won't stand up. It really is the foundation. So we need to just run through it, but keep in mind all the time, I'm wanting you to think about what it means for what you're going to be painting. So, you get in the right position there. Um, we're going to look at your message, what painting means for you and what you want your viewers to experience. Also, the brain and how what we see impacts us and impacts the brain of the viewer. And then just the general tools and guidelines uh, that work with composition, just so you've got some of those key practical takeaways as well. Now, when I ask you about your message, if you are painting simply because you love the experience of painting the flowers and you feel happy when you paint flowers, there is nothing better. There is no better motivation as far as I'm concerned than that. If just painting makes you happy, then that is fantastic. <laughs> Narrowing that down to is there a certain kind of painting that makes you happier is where I'm interested. So when I paint, uh, plants and flowers, I literally fall in love with the painting that I'm making. I really do. <laughs> and 
and that it's just such a beautiful experience. It's really a love experience for me. I know that sounds totally weird, but, but it's it. Now, when I'm painting a portrait, it's quite different. And sometimes when I've done big portrait series, I want to get back to painting a flower because then I'll feel better. So I know how the different kinds of subjects uh, affect me. So this is where I'm coming from. What impact do you want the painting to have on you? And what impact do you want your paintings to have on the viewer? Have you actually thought about this? So this is a real step back from the canvas and think about this because when you've sorted it, everything gets easier. When you have clarified why you're doing this, what's your message, why are you involved in painting? Then it becomes much easier. Your decision making becomes more streamlined when you're thinking about what to paint next. Because that is something I hear artists say over and over again. Oh, I don't really know what to paint next. And I guess I hear it because when you paint from nature, you never think that. When you paint from nature, <laughs> there's so many things you want to paint. And oh, this is, look, it's autumn and everything's red and gold and there are so many things you want to do. So uh, I, I just keep telling you that so you understand where I'm going from. Now, I have um, put these message motivations into three areas. This is my key observation, is that you want somebody, when you're creating a painting, you want the viewer to see something differently. Now, when I paint Australian natives, I move in the right direction, there we are. Uh, when I paint Australian natives, uh, Australian natives are often really small and I paint them really big because I want people to see them. I want them to see something that's around us all the time differently. And so I take my camera up really close and I make compositions or my eye that I'm very close to. I'm often painting from um, nature. So if I'm not outside, I'm using a, a photo because I don't pick things. I don't you know, necessarily kill them to paint them. Um, or I'm in national parks and places or botanic gardens where you shouldn't pick things. But that my motivation is completely telling the story of how I compose the painting. Right, so this is why it's important for you to know that. Do you want someone to see something differently and therefore you're gonna make it really tiny maybe because you want them to have to step forward and look at your painting and see what's going on. What is driving you and how could the way you present your material make that difference? Now, the second point, the journey. If you've watched the video, you'll see I put up some paintings of journeys. Uh, Clarice Beckett does uh, great shots of down the road and all of the uh, telephone posts give you that sense of perspective. But I love paintings that have, you know, a road going around the hills and, and, and they, they invite you to go somewhere. They invite you to move from where you are now into this story that the artist has created. So I'm very attracted to those that may or may not be the same for you. Think about whether you want to take people somewhere and then uh, experience a specific emotion. And in the video, I refer to my friend here in Melbourne, Callie Lotz. And Callie is from South Africa. Uh, there's been a lot of change there. She's had, had to move to Australia and she found herself painting uh, buckets and cups and containers and realized uh, that she was exploring the emotion of containment because that's what she was feeling. And that's all that's in her paintings. If you look up Callie Lotz, C-A-L-L-Y-L-O-T-Z, there's not lots of background. It's just the container or the piece of rope or string or bag she's focusing just on that you see so her objective is why the composition is done as it is so really understanding your message and taking the time to step back and look at, at that can make a huge difference to what you're trying to achieve so 
think about doing that. Think about actually us answering these questions. Write them down. What do you want to experience and what do you want your viewer to experience? Because that is when you will decide to control yourself and think about what you do with composition. And when you do that, you are in a stronger place. You don't feel as unconfident because you can explore something specific. And that takes me to our second point, which is the brain and what's going on. So, you know, I have taught for years in a corporate environment, uh, using the learnings of neuroscience for uh, to help us just have a better day <laughs> in all different ways, whether it's writing better documents or whatever. And I want to just share something with you about the brain so you understand a little bit more about how that affects composition as well. So here's my man with his, his brain. And you understand, you know, you hear people, some, somebody mention the brain stem. And what you have in the brain is the very old part of the brain, what they call the lizard brain. And it, it uses very little energy and it's very good for just doing stuff you don't have to think about, right? It's become automatic. You, you don't have to think about it when you have a shower or now when you ride a bike or drive the car. But when you learn to ride a bike or drive the car, you had to use the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex part of your brain is where you make decisions. You can see irony um, and uh, where you, comp you, you um, are able to sort complex information. Now, painting is all about decision making. And we only get uh, one or two hours of access to the prefrontal cortex in a day. The reason for that is because it uses tons of glucose. It is a big energy user, okay? Old brain, new brain. Old brain doesn't use much energy, new brain does. So when you learn a new task, the old brain will say, stop that. <laughs> That is using too much energy. And if we use too much energy, we will be vulnerable and exposed to the saber-toothed tiger. So we have evolved, which you know, with the flight or fright response. And a flight response, when the saber-toothed tiger jumps at us, we will <laughs> get the hell out of here. We will run. Or we will stand and fight. And our brain is still operating on those principles where uh, thousands of times a second, it is scanning the room where you are and checking that everything's safe. It knows where the doors and the windows are. It knows where the weak points are. And it checks that you're safe because your brain's big job is to keep you safe at all times. So it doesn't really like you learning new things once you're an adult. It wants you to stay with stuff you already know how to do uh, where it's comfortable. Comfort is everything for the old part of the brain. So what that means for us in terms of composition, comfort means uh, repetition, patterns, harmony. That is comfort and they're things we recognize in a composition. But what attracts our attention is novelty. So novelty is contrast, all right? Now, let me show you in this painting. Let me get it, turn it right there. Okay, here's a very simple flower. It's a tea tree. It has five petals and your brain, when you look at it, gets it. Yep, that's a flower shape. I know that, I like that, no threat there. No problem. <laughs> but what I've done to make this more interesting this is actually a painting that we play, that everyone does in one of my classes, is I've got the light coming from behind the flower instead of straight onto it. If it was straight onto it, everything would be very light, but these dark shadow areas, my hands go the right way with the reverse, <laughs> create contrast. 
And that contrast is what makes it look more interesting. So that uh, looking for novelty or contrast for us as painters, that means contrast, something different. And light is often what would help us do that. But you can see we've got the balance of both things here. We've got a recognisable flower shape, but then we've made it more interesting through how we use contrast. So understanding a bit about the brain really can make a difference there. I was speaking to uh, Gordon, who's a composer, when I was preparing this. And of course, a composer gets that um, riffs, music is just made of riffs, small, simple, repeatable riffs. And that's what we like. So in our painting, we want that harmony. We want the patterns. So you might have, if you were painting a particular flower, um, that might be the central part of your composition, but you might see repeats of that. So we'll often see a repeat three times in a good composition for the reason that the brain is therefore experiencing harmony because it's got confidence because it keeps seeing the same pattern. So how your brain works is a big factor. There's you and what you want to create. And then how does the brain work? And what effect do you want to have on the brain of the user? And that brings us to our third area, which was the guidelines. Now, when you look at any composition, if I go back to this one, You've probably heard of the rule of thirds. So I would, I can put a grid in my iPhone camera to divvy up this into one, two, and three vertically, and then one, two, and three horizontally. And where the lines intersect, that is where there's a key focal point. So that's the traditional way of thinking about composition. If it was a landscape, you would see the background, the middle ground and the foreground. And that gives us something logical to work with. If you're a photographer, you know this as depth of field. You'll have something that you're actually uh, focusing on in your composition. Just take that down. And then what's behind is is falling back and it doesn't have as sharp a lines. The tools we use as artists when we're trying to create depth of field, because we have, we've got this two dimensional canvas here, but I am making a three dimensional picture because I make realist pictures, paintings. And so I will use different tools. I'll use the sharpness of a line here is a sharp, definite line in this painting. And that is the closest to, to the viewer, right? Right back here, this leaf at the back, this is very soft. It's a soft edge. And that soft edge tells the eye that it's further back. So I'm using how the eye works to help me create this depth of field. So I can use that with the sharpness of lines, but also I do that with the color. So you can see the more definite, clear color up here. And again, move back here and it becomes more dissipated. You'll see if you look at my um, videos on color intensity, I show you how to uh, dilute that color, make it less intense. The intense ones will jump out at us and then when we decrease the intensity, that's a way of decreasing that focus or the depth within the painting. So we can use edges, we can use the color, and we can also use contrast to be able to create some depth within what we're doing. So have a look at the paintings you really like. Start noticing, is it, is it the harmony of colour that grabs you? Or is it something about the structure 
So the, um, the one that takes you on a journey, that's the structure that takes you on that journey. Is there a foreground, a middle ground and a background clearly uh, differentiated within those paintings that you like? Because I'm really wanting you to tune into what switches you on when you see paintings. And you may have many skills, you might be able to do many different things. But I want you for the purpose of what we're doing to really identify what really switches you on, what do you really like. And I want you to eschew, I want you to leave those other things for a while and just pursue this one area. So because I was a, you know, studying biology a long time ago and botany and I love plants and, you know, I tuned into the Australian natives because it meant something to me because I want people to see them more and use them in their, our gardens, not use the um, plants from overseas, which we've tended to do, but see the beauty in our own plants because that was really important to me. That is my driver. That's why I chose it. But also, look, I could paint the peonies and the roses and the other beautiful flowers because I love them. But I made a discipline and said, no, I'm going to stick with a certain thing. And that's made me become known for that. And my work has gone all around the world in painting those things. So choose something and you will find it switches your life on differently. Because although I used to go for a walk in the Botanic Gardens, once I started doing this, I went with purpose, knowing that, oh, what's going to be flowering? What will have fruit on it? Uh, everything shifted because I decided to drill down in one subject. So that is my message for you today in composition. It may not, may not be what you thought we were going to cover, but really, as with so many things, it starts with you. It starts with you thinking about what really switches you on.